So last week on the show, we talked about India Walton's former Democratic Party primary opponent and how he was launching a sore loser write-in campaign. I want to play a clip that is circulating in leftist circles online because it shows him speaking about India Walton, and I'm, of course, referring to Byron Brown, her former opponent. And he's going to speak about her in a way that is very, we'll call it Trumpian. See for yourself. We are going on to the general election as a candidate for mayor and what people have been saying is write down Byron Brown. You know, we know the difference between socialism and democracy. We are going to fight for democracy in the city of Buffalo. The voters have said that they don't want an unqualified, inexperienced, radical socialist trying to learn on the job on the backs of the residents of this community. We will not let it happen. I am a democratic socialist. The first word in that is democrat. Unqualified, inexperienced, radical socialist. Where have I heard that before? It's almost indistinguishable from the way that Donald Trump used to talk about the squad. But this is someone who was a member of the Democratic Party, and he's talking about a Democratic Socialist in that way. And as Benjamin Dixon points out via Twitter, how is this language any different than Trump talking about Obama, dismissing India Walton as an inexperienced radical socialist? Mayor Byron Brown is literally his own version of the big lie, mounting a write-in campaign against Sister Walton. And that's exactly it. The reason why he lost is twofold. First of all, India Walton mounted a very serious primary campaign against him, and she just got out the vote more. She absolutely went to work canvassing, rallying people in Buffalo. And second of all, Byron didn't really run a campaign. He saw India Walton and he thought, mm, I'm not going to really run a primary challenge or a primary campaign against my primary challenger because I don't view her as a threat. This isn't him saying this, but this is what happened. He did not really do much to campaign. He was a little bit too arrogant. And now he's angry at the results that an insurgent candidate will be taking his job. And there's a reason why India Walton was victorious. Like, look at her platform. Let's look at just a couple of elements from her platform. So when it comes to public housing, she has a clear, concrete message with clear goals. She wants to sign a tenant's bill of rights within the first 100 days, and over the next couple of years, she's going to repair and redress the harm done to public housing and further democratize the Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority, and yet he's saying that she's not democratic and that socialism isn't democratic. When it comes to climate change, she wants to create a comprehensive climate action plan in the first 100 days and convert Buffalo into a more sustainable community over the next couple of years and develop what I think looks like a small scale version of the Green New Deal, which is incredible. I wish that every single mayor across the country would do this. And those are just two of many highly detailed policies that she offered to voters. That's why they supported her. And look, in the event the shoe were on the other foot and India Walton lost and then she mounted a write-in campaign, we all know exactly what Byron would be saying. He'd be saying, well, look, this is really damaging to unity. We need to come together. Let's, let's help the people of Buffalo help me win. But now, he's not choosing to do that. He is launching an incredibly divisive write-in campaign after he lost a Democratic Party primary that he took for granted because he thought that he was owed the votes of his constituents. He felt entitled to that seat. And it caught up with him. So, Byron, if you actually care about the people of Buffalo like you say you do, you would stop with this incredibly embarrassing attempt to still win. You lost. End the write-in campaign. Support India Walton. If you're truly worried that she lacks experience and that she's not good for Buffalo, help her. You can get on board. Help her campaign. Help her win, be an advisor to her, although I don't think she'd want that, given how poor of a sport you've been. But what you're doing is incredibly damaging, and this is all about self-aggrandizement. You don't actually care about the people of Buffalo. If you did, you would have actually done things to help them. And because you failed, they went with someone else. So listen, folks, this gives you all the more reason, if you haven't already, to support India Walton. You can go to indiawalton.com. 
and send her a couple of bucks. If you live in Buffalo, sign up to support her campaign, phone bank, and canvas for her. This is a heavily Democratic Party-leaning district, so I'm not necessarily worried about the threat posed to her by the Republican, but in the event Byron does go through with this write-in campaign, and it seems as if that is the case, you know, is he going to split votes with her to the point where it leads the Republican to win as an incumbent mayor. Can he actually mount a successful write-in campaign? I'm inclined to say no, but we can't take this victory for granted. We absolutely have to put in the work if we want to see India Walton become elected. And it's important for everyone across the country, even if you don't live in Buffalo, to want to get her elected because her successes can create a blueprint for future socialists. So look, it's incredibly frustrating to see Democrats preach about unity for years and years and years, and then the minute it becomes convenient, turn on that message and launch these write-in campaigns that are just incredibly embarrassing. So we've got to support India Walton, we've got to have her back, and let her know that the movement is there for her, because she very clearly is someone who's helping us in the fight to change America. And, you know, it starts in Buffalo, but what she does here can grow. So we've got to support India Walton, indiawalton.com.